Hey everybody, I'm here with comic creator Mike Grell. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me for a couple minutes. It's a pleasure. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, so, one of your biggest claims to fame is the reinvention of Green Arrow. Yes. Yeah, now, um, you did some changes to the classic Neil Adams design. He's here. Are we going to watch you guys fight later? You mean like a tonto? Yeah, a little, just, a little, just a little scrap. No. no. Uh, but what, what was so different about your uh, iteration of Green Arrow that you wanted to bring to this character? Well, it was, it was more a, a, a sea change for the character than anything else. The, yes, the costume changed, but for more practical reasons. Yes. Um, for, for starters, I wanted to bring the character into the real world, which meant moving him away from a mythical star city into a real world city. I'm a small town guy from uh, a town called Florence, Wisconsin, 100 miles north of Green Bay. I've only ever lived in three cities in my life. Chicago, where I went to art school, New York, where I broke into comics, and Seattle, where I was living at the time that I was doing the, the Green Era. Um, and if you're going to write a real world city, it has to be authentic. I'd already done New York for uh, Sable. And Chicago is a great town, don't get me wrong, terrific music, great food, but the landscape around it is flat and boring. In Seattle, you've got the mountains, you've got the ocean, close to the Canadian border, everything else, rich, diverse, international community and everything like that. And you have to write about some place that you know with enough authority because the city becomes one of the characters in your book. And it also affects what the character looks like because if Green Arrow is going to live in, New in uh, Seattle, he can't be running around with bear sleeves <laughs> and leotards and a Robin Hood cap because it rains a bunch in Seattle. So on went the hood, on went the long sleeves, and on went proper trousers as opposed to the leotards. That was one of the changes. The other change was I threw away the trick arrows and the fancy bow, and I gave him an old-fashioned longbow. Uh, but the, the key change to that all was that I also, because I stopped using the trick arrows, I, what I wanted to do was get him shooting people for real. Yeah. And that was part of the, part of the reason why I took the assignment. Uh, when Mike Gold called me up, he's my editor, uh, he asked me, uh, is there any character over at DC that you like well enough to bury the hatchet and come back to work over here? This is after I had gone on and done uh, John Singer Freelance, which is, you know, pretty bloodthirsty, blood and guts, very real world based stories, lots of shit about bang bang and stuff like that. And I told him that I always felt that I had done such a lousy job on Batman in the 70s, I'd love to get another chance at it, but I just had dinner with Frank Miller about a week or so before and Frank told me his idea for the Dark Knight. I said, you know, when Frank's done with the Dark Knight, he can put a period at the end of the Batman sentence for the next 20 years. Well, so far I'm off by 10 years in college, right? <laughs> um, and Mike Gold said, well, think about this. Green Arrow is an urban hunter. And that was it. I mean, that was the hook right there. I was given carte blanche to do whatever kind of stories that I wanted. And uh, I told him that I wanted to change from the way Danny had treated the character, which was, he was very, very liberal. Um, and he had had an incident where he accidentally killed a guy. And went off his nut, withdrew from society, joined the monastery, shaved his head, swore he would never, ever kill another human being. Well. If you go around shooting arrows at people, sooner or later, Eventually you're going to poke gonna an eye die. out. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's, someone's going to get hurt. Yeah, somebody's going to lose an eye, right? <laughs> and and uh, I also wanted to be able to do the kind of hard edge real-world stories that I've done in Sable. And in order to do that, I had to bring about a change in the character of Green Arrow. So, I had a situation that I set up where Ollie makes a choice. He's found... Uh, Dino Lance strung up, strung up to a forklift 
in a warehouse. Uh, she's been beaten, brutalized, and the, the bad guys got her by the hair in one hand and a knife in the other hand. And I had already shown in the previous issue that Ollie could easily shoot the knife out of that guy's hand, but he doesn't. He shoots him square through the heart for two reasons. One, the son of a bitch deserved it. Yeah, of but course. Number two, that was the moment of change for that character. Yes. The, the, from that point on, his approach as an action hero changes, his life changes, his relationship with Dinah changes. Mm -hmm. um, as a, as a writer, as a storyteller, the, the key elements uh, to any story are plot, setting, characterization, motivation, conflict, change, you know, change <laughs> and resolution. The plot is easy. What's your story about? Setting, where does it take place? Uh, characterization, who are these people? Motivation, uh, why do they do what they do? Conflict, what's the problem here? But you gotta have the change, otherwise, my, my, my favorite examples are the Rambo movies and the Oceans 11, 11 12, 13 series, right? Uh, in, the, in the first Rambo story, First Blood, the character goes through a lot of changes. He's different at the end than he is at the beginning, and it's full, it's entertaining as anything. Second one was we just played for fun. And, and action, and that was okay. It, it was what it was. The third one, they went, to hell with this. We don't have to do any characterization at all. You already know these people. Yeah, yeah. Let's just blow a bunch of stuff up, right? <laughs> just fun and in, and in the Ocean's 11, 12, 13, it was the same thing. The 11 was all the character setups, the background of the stories, tight, really interesting. Number two was not nearly as interesting. They focused on just a couple of characters. And number three, uh, number 13, they went, you already know all these people, otherwise you wouldn't be here sitting in the theater watching this movie, so we don't really have to give you anything, do we? Yeah. Because it's just fan enough. service at that it's, point. Yeah, yeah, right. But your changes, you know, have pretty much lasted all the way through the day. He's still in Seattle, and that's kind of colored his um, social justice warrior take that has come in the last couple of years. Uh, your changes inspired Arrow. How, how cool has that been to see, you know, your brainchild get brought to the screen? And, and not just to the screen, it's now the Arrowverse. You know, your, your ideas helped inspire an entire, you know, group, an entire universe of TV that we never would have had otherwise. It's really totally freaking cool, yeah. i got to tell you. I would imagine. It's, it, it's a kick in the ass. <laughs> uh, watch the, the first episode, and they mentioned Judge Grell. The corrupt judge. A little, little bit. Yeah. Of course you're yeah. a corrupt judge. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> of course I would be. I, I'm not cheap, but I could be had. I'm just, I'm just saying. If for anybody out there who, who wants to fix a traffic ticket, I'm your guy. I'm, I'm just saying. Um, my, my niece called me up and said, Uncle oh, Mike, you're famous. I said, Sweetie, I've been famous for over 40 years. You just never noticed before. And then she said, uh, So, uh, does he have to pay you to use the name? And I said, if you're asking, am I going to die and make you rich? No. <laughs> well, you have been uh, doing some variant covers lately yes. for the series. Uh, and it's the roughly 30th anniversary of uh, Longbow Hunters, right? Just passed. Yeah. yeah. So, who do we have to petition to get you back on the book? And good, that's would a, you want to? Like, that's, a, that's a good question. In a heartbeat. Yeah. In a heartbeat, I would. Um, I, I would say that the guys that you need to talk to are the editorial hoo -hahs at Just DC start spamming Comics. them on the internet. Yeah. yeah, start everybody. Just just bomb the heck out of them. Uh, and, and, and let them know that you'd like to see what my take would be. I, I, I do have an idea for a storyline that I'd like to do. Oh, nice. And, yeah, and... Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of fans would love to hear what else you have for the character. I'm not done by a long shot. Yeah. <laughs> not done by a long shot. Well, for the con in New Orleans, uh, how is coming to New Orleans for a Wizard World con compared to maybe other cons you've been to? Well, I love it down here because, I mean, 
got the food and the music, yep. right? <laughs> um, I, I, I managed to lose uh, 30 pounds between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I'm working on gaining back <laughs> as many as I can before this weekend is over. <laughs> and, I, and I said, you know, it's you could say, okay, you go off your diet for Christmas, you go off your diet for New Year's, but this is New Orleans, so I'm off until I get on the airplane again on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Um, and, and it's double take the hind next. As, mu as much gumbo and, and all that great stuff as you can pack in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Well, since cons have, in the last couple of years, become very multimedia, very movie-centric, very TV-centric, it's nice to see you know creators like yourself at these events. It's really cool for the comic fans that still want to go to a comic con. It becomes an issue sometimes. Um, there are cases where the, the media guests, the celebrity uh, cadre, the core of the celebrities, so far out shadows the comic people that they suck all the money out of them. Yeah. People have, have a choice between getting an autograph from me for five bucks or spending a hundred dollars for David Tennant. Guess who they're going to? And, and the line is, is right. out the door. Wait, right. the line is out the door. Um, that's that's just the way of it. That's that's the way of, of life. Um, but there are uh, conventions still around the country that cater mostly to the comic crowd. Uh, Baltimore Comic Con. Yeah. Now, strictly, they, they won't let celebrities in unless they're also writing or drawing yeah. a comic book, yeah. which is a crack. So, so Gerard Way can show up. Right. Musician, right. but also writer at DC. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I Thanks, really Michael, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks. It's wonderful. Have a great time in New Orleans. We love having you here. And I uh, hope to see you back next year or maybe in a, a future con. I, I always skip a year in between. Okay. I'm looking forward to coming back. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you very Thanks. much.